Hi there, Goose here, and we're going to be talking about the Les Paul. We're going to be talking about your Les Paul, and we're going to talk, talk about my Les Paul. This is, of course, Coffee Chat, where we drink coffee and we hang out. So, without further ado, let's have a listen to me playing along to a backing track. With First, I'm going to be using my Providence Free the Tone Soft 2 pedal, Overdrive. And then I'm going to use the Overdrive from the this kind of a Dumble Clone amplifier. But you're going to hear these pickups... Um, in this guitar and then we can discuss everything about Les Pauls after that so check this out <laughs> Oops, oh sorry, you're back guys. Okay, so you've heard this Les Paul in action. Um, it doesn't matter that it's an ESP Navigator guitar, it costs three and a half grand, it's Honduras mahogany, all that stuff, doesn't matter, doesn't matter. What matters is it's a Les Paul kind of style guitar. You may have an Epiphone, an Edwards, you may have a Gibson Custom Shop, you may have um, you know, a late 70s Gibson Deluxe, it doesn't matter because this is gonna apply to everybody that's got a kind of a Les Paul style guitar. So this particular guitar, I love it. You know, I've played many, many guitars. As if you've seen the show, you know I've played 58s, 59s, 60s. And for me, this is my favorite Les Paul style guitar. Why is that? Because, you know, I've put all my own, oops, another dent there. Um, and my own pickups, my, you know, I put the machine heads that I've wanted to put on there. Um, just everything, you know, it's my, it's my thing, you know, and my string gauge and my action. That's why I like it the best, you know, because it's personalized for me. And that's why you like yours the best because you've personalized it for yourselves. So that's really, really important thing. You know, we don't have to be snobbish about this. You might have an Epiphone that plays beautifully. That's all that matters, you know? But I'm gonna tell you some mods and things that I've found over the years that have worked for me. Maybe they'll work for you. So some things you might wanna try out. So first of all, let's talk about the pots here, okay? In this guitar here, we've got CTS pots. Now these ones here, I'm just gonna show you this cavity. So you can have a look. I don't know if you can see this. What's inside there? These are the pots. These are Mojo pots, and these are um, um, Dublin uh, Green capacitors, which we're going to talk about in a minute. But the pots um, are really important. Now there is a company um, called VIP Pots, and they're basically vintage inspired um, pots. Um, well, vintage inspired pickups, I think, is the VIP pseudonym whatever it's called um but they're basically remakes of the central labs pots which were used on the original um les paul guitars from the 58 59 60 sort of era and the actual the readings of these the values of these are between 530k and 550k because that's what the old ones measured you know they kind of drifted a bit you know whereas if you buy a modern set of mo um CTS Mojos, I think they're called, um, they will be, say, 500K. So that's another thing you might want to change. Have a look at, check out VIP um, Pots. They should give me an endorsement for this. Um, check out VIP Pots because they are the closest ones, apparently, to the Central Labs original pots they used in the late 50s. 
Okay, let's talk about bumblebees. Now, if you've got a custom shop Les Paul guitar, you might have a bumblebee, you know, in the cavity here, but that's not a real bumblebee. That's actually a fake bumblebee because inside that bumblebee sort of casing is another capacitor. And so there's, you can find this on the forums. Um, it's been exposed. Just so one thing you might want to change to get an original Bumblebee, which is probably going to set you back a hundred dollars. Um, you can find them on eBay and such, so forth. But you might want to check the values as well because they drift. And also, you might want to check that it's a, um, you know, the real deal. You know. Now I'm using in here. I'm using a Cornell Dublier, um green capacitor. So just have a look at these ones. Okay. These are my favourite. You know, when I say my favourite, it works in this guitar. Now, you might have an, an Epiphoneless Paul, which is a lot denser and more sort of darker sounding than this, because it's quite a bright sounding guitar. Um, and, and, you know, so I'm using the, the, the tone knobs quite a bit, you know, especially when I'm using overdrive and clean sounds as well, if I want to mellow it out. And as well, you're always going through that capacitor, you know, your tone's going through that capacitor pretty much all the time. So it's an important thing to uh, take into account there. Let's move on. Um, so let's talk about the truss rods. If you've got a custom shop Gibson guitar made, say before 2012, odds are that it's got a, um, a rubber thing around the truss rod that can dampen um, the you know the dampen the whole guitar because um, you know Bob, um, good friend Bob who does a show here with me, um, he always says that all the tone of a Les Paul and most guitars comes from the neck. You know, so if you've got this kind of truss rod which is inside like a, a rubber casing it's going to dampen you know just dampen that um the sound of the wood you know the sound of the neck resonating um so that's that let's talk about the um the stop tail piece and the abrs one i think it's called the the bridge here um you really want um um, I've sort of been recommended. I mean, these are Goto. Okay, this is what came on the guitar. It sounds good. I'm not going to change it, you know, because I could change it and then I'll change it again. I, I know what I'm like. Once I start changing something, then I, I go on a hunt to replace it, and in the end, I've kind of, you know, it's, it's, it doesn't sound very good. So I've kept with the Goto hardware. This is cheap. This is Goto hardware, but it's good enough for, you know, ESP custom shop. So it's good enough for me. But I know a lot of people like the uh, pigtail. Um, stuff they like the Montrose is really really good as well um, and with this kind of um, ABRS one bridge um, saddles you really really want these made um, from brass and also the screws as well which go in the body let's have, if I could show you again these so the screws here you want these are want these from brass as well now if you check out the forums I'll try and put a link um, as well. There's a, a modification called the Maple Leaf Mod, which actually I've heard um, gives you longer screws which go into the body, um, which hold the bridge, the bridge pins, I guess they're called. And uh, they're longer. And apparently they, they change the tone of the guitar somewhat, make the guitar sound a bit brighter, you know, a bit more hi-fi. Um, so that's another, it's called the Maple Leaf Modification. Might want to check that out. I think there's even, you can even buy kits now because there was a, a user um, called Maple Leaf or something and he, he was the guy that came up with that, um, that idea. So you might want to try that, but you're going to have to drill deeper holes into the top of your Les Ball. Don't know if you want to do that, but that could change the sound if you're not happy with the sound, you know? Okay, so frets as well. Frets um, can play a, a big part. I tend to stay away from stainless steel frets because, um, in my opinion, I like the vintage stuff. At least I don't think the vintage stuff was stainless steel, but I think stainless steel um, is very hard. And again, it doesn't allow the neck to resonate as well as the sort of nickel, I guess they are, frets. Um, so I prefer vintage frets. I mean, you know, it's um, this guitar really kind of works well at the moment it hasn't had a refret but if i did refret it i'd probably put jumbos in there if i was going to play concerts if i wasn't playing concerts with you know i use 11s on this so if i wasn't playing concerts maybe i'd go for a more sort of um a skinnier fret i don't know you know just depends what i'm sort of work i'm doing with the guitar really another thing about the the guitar is a weight uh, now some people think that having a, a guitar around 9.5 pounds um is better it makes the guitar sound better you know and bear in mind you know like if you think of george harrison's lucy you know the, the les paul that 
was given to George Harrison by Eric Clapton. Um, there's a great interview where George Harrison is complaining that the guitar's too heavy. I think this was around 92 when they were touring in Japan and he's saying, oh, the guitar's too heavy to tour, it hurts my shoulder, you know? And then he plays a Telecaster and he goes, wait a minute, this is the same weight as my Les Paul. <laughs> so kind of Les Pauls, I think a Les Paul around nine pounds is not gonna be, you know, you think about bass players, they have to play a lot, you know, heavier instruments than we do. So I think a Les Paul around nine pounds is fine. Okay, around about 10 pounds, yeah, maybe that's something you wanna think about if you're gonna have that around your neck all night. You know, it depends if you're sitting down and playing at home, then it doesn't matter the weight. But if you can only play standing up, then the weight's going to be an issue. This is 8.25 pounds or 8 point, I think around there. But I put some really heavy tuners on there. You can see that. These are shallow German elites that used to go on a Fender de Quisto guitar. And this has added a little bit of weight to it. And, you know, maybe a bit of tone coming from the headstock. Maybe it's just in my my mind I don't know but just I like it not too light I don't like Les Pauls that are really light so this is probably between 8.5 and 9 pounds now which is a nice a nice weight for a Les Paul I think okay so let's talk about the pickups um, on these guitars um, so these are these are mojos but again it's it's not it's immaterial for me the pickup because if I tell you guys go and buy some Mojo pickups which you, you can't even buy them because Mojo is not making them anymore what I'm telling you guys is experiment with a few different pickups in your guitars because every guitar is different and there's no set rule of what pickups going to sound good in your particular guitar you just have to experiment it may be you know I've heard people that play Epiphone guitars I keep coming back to Epiphone but they play Epiphone with stock Epiphone pickups they sound amazing you know, because they've got the right amp, they've got the right feel, the right touch, the right nuances in their fingers. They've learned, they've, you know, used those pickups for years and so they just know how to work them. So really, you know, a lot of people are hung up, oh, it's gotta be this pickup from this boutique guy. It doesn't really have to be that. It just has to be that you know your guitar, you know how to work it, you know how to get the sounds out of it and it reacts with your amplifier the way you want it to, you know? But one thing I will say about pickups is this. Maybe think about the magnets as well because you know I'm, I'm going to experiment with some Alvinico 3s I think which were an original pickup I think it was something to do with the second world war they were trying to save zinc or coal boat or something so they're a little bit weaker the uh, Alvinico 3s in some respects and um, but they're kind of a more open jazzier sounding pickup that's good for jazz and blues you know so I'm going to try a, an Alvinico 3 and I'll, I'll report back guys but I guess Alvinico 4 and they got five are the ones that people tend to use. Um, you might want to tell me in the comments which ones you like and your experiences with different types of magnets, but that's really important. These are, um, this is a Peter Green kind of set and the the neck pickup is reverse wound. Not It doesn't have a magnet flip, it has a re reverse wind so that the outer face sound is less throaty and it's more milder, which I personally prefer. Now, I don't know if Peter Green's guitar, which is kind of it, this is a copy of, is has that um, re reverse wind. Maybe it's a, a magnet flip, who knows? But anyway, I like it on this guitar, it works. Okay guys, so let's just talk about how to set your pickups up. So you put your pickups in the guitar. And what you might wanna do is just set the, the, the height of the pickup. So you might wanna do um, sort of um, two millimeters, on the bridge pickup either side and then on the neck you might want to do the high e three millimeters and then 3.5 millimeters distance for the low e so that might just be just start off with that those settings you know because some people ask me what pickup heights i have so just try those settings out and then to dial in the pickup to your strings what you want to do is first of all dial in the g so play you know just literally um play your g string because that's going to be the loudest string on your guitar normally. So you want to, you know, dial in the screw. Maybe you have to screw that, screw that screw right into the body of the pickup. And then after that one, after that screw, you want to tune in the D string. So you want to get the, the balance between the G and the D. And then you can do the higher and the lower notes. So really, that's, that's a really good technique of, of setting the screw heights inside the pickups. It's first of all, you know, get the volume you're happy with the G. And then the D string, you get the balance between the G and the D because you've got an unwound G and a wound D, obviously. And then you tune the others to taste. And that's a really good kind of system of, of setting those screws. 
and um, as well with the height settings I gave you that that would be a good kind of starting point for you action um, I like um, basically two millimeters on the high E and the low E so that could be you know either side you're setting um, you know two millimeters either side and if we're talking about the actual neck relief I would say between 0.5 and 0.8 is a good starting place um, you don't want to have I don't like too much of um, relief because then it's harder to play um, we're gonna we're gonna talk about action and stiffness on a Les Paul because that's a really important point sometimes you'll play a Les Paul and it's really stiff and hard to bend and some other Les Pauls are really easy to bend notes so this is where it comes with the the wraparound so I don't know if you can see this where I've, I've got the strings wrapped around here so this is this is called the break angle now with the stop tail piece which we didn't really talk about I like to screw that right into the body so the the stop tail piece is pretty much down you know but then I wrap my strings over the top and that just makes it a bit more slinky because what I'm looking for is low action I'm playing 11s here so I'm looking for low action and a very sort of slinky easily easy to bend strings you know now you might want to tune your Les Paul in differently and you might want to you know put the strings normally through the tail piece and then you're going to have a much sharper um, break angle and that might make the strings stiffer but it's going to change the tone <clears throat> of the guitar so those are a few things you want to experiment with you know do you want a nice slinky easy to bend guitar or do you want a more stiffer action um, and obviously it's going to affect the tone you know if, if you're going to have that break angle you're going to have a different tone maybe more hi-fi sort of tone when I say hi-fi I mean more sort of maybe a bit more brittle or harsh even so I think the way I've got it is more mellow sound um, the strings are a bit slacker and that's really what I'm looking for you know is 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 to play it as easy you know have my action very low you know and nice play it nice and um easy to play you know um, another another friend actually said he he doesn't know how to how to really tune the guitar in so that you can play it high up here so when you're bending strings up here it, the, the guitar's not even and this really comes in to do with the the neck angle and the way the the, the angle of the neck coming into the body um, and it can be different, you know, a, a vintage Les Paul is probably going to be different from a modern custom shop Les Paul. Um, on this particular, this is why I love this guitar, because the the action is just so even across. And so when you're bending here, and if you're going up an octave, you know, it's, it's the same. It's, the action doesn't really change. And that's one thing I really, really love about this particular guitar. But it's taken me a few guitars to get to this one um you know so that's one thing you might want to just check out every you know neck angle is going to be slightly different and it's going to affect the upper frets you know so you really have to sort of um you know decide are you going to tune this guitar in pickups pots everything we've talked about you might go through all of that process and then you don't like that guitar that's not your les paul you know um, and even I actually sold this guitar um, a few years ago. I sold it because I, I didn't. I had a surplus of Les Pauls, didn't need it. And then I bought it back and realised how much I loved it. You know, so um, it's kind of like I didn't know what I had until I, I it had gone. You know, and that's really kind of the journey I guess every, we're all going through. Is we, we're playing all these Les Pauls, and then you'll find the one. You know, there's always that one Les Paul which is you can do anything on, and it's it's your guitar. It's your Les Paul. And so for me, that was always the case. I didn't want um, a gold top with P90s. I didn't want a custom with the Al uh, Nikos, which I love. I just wanted one Les Paul. I didn't care what, what, which one it was, a gold top, whatever. I just wanted one, one amazing one, which I'm going to play, you know, because my belief is I don't want three Les Pauls that I never play. I just want one that is my workhorse that I, that I enjoy playing and it gives me the tone that I want. So really that's, you know, I've made a lot of modifications on this guitar. Another thing I've done is I've sanded down the back of the neck now some people are saying oh that's dangerous because moisture can get in well i guess you can oil it maybe that's something i need to do but um just i like the feel of a really worn in neck so i've sanded that down with a with a pad thing um and it's gone down to the bare wood that's another thing i like and also maybe it you know opens up a bit of tone there as well 
So these are kind of all sort of modifications you can do once you've got your guitar. Now, scratch plate or no scratch plate. Now, I actually love a Les Paul without a scratch plate, you know. <laughs> and um, unfortunately, I cannot play. I have to have a scratch plate because I came from a Stratocaster and a Telecaster. So I need that, you know, like Jimmy Page, I need to have that scratch plate. Otherwise, my little fingers sort of falls off the, you know, the guitar. Um, and just lastly, the knobs here. Um, I'm actually, I've got the sort of Gary Moore configuration. I don't know if you can see that. So I've got the top hats here and the original ones here, which kind of makes sense. It's really, it's a genius idea because, you know, the, the guitar goes down. So you want to have a taller one here and then a more shallower one there. So that's kind of another little neat, neat little thing. And I think that's about it, really. It's, it's, um, it's a sum of its parts. You know, sometimes you can, you can, you know, my belief is if you get a guitar and you love it, don't change anything. You don't need to change it. But if it's not happening and you're not happy with it, then, you know, change, you know, because at the end of the day, you know, you're the one that's going to be playing it and um, you need to forget about the guitar and play the music. That's the ultimate goal. And if something's kind of bugging you, then that sometimes that's hard to do. So get your instrument sorted and then you can play and learn some songs and learn some some cool licks. Um, that's really my philosophy, really. Thanks, guys, for watching this video. It's been a real pleasure. I hope you've got something out of this. I certainly have. I want to thank a really cool friend of mine called Elvis who's given me a lot of information for this video. And I'm going to be back real soon. So until then, take care. God bless.